Mason Cohn for Tufts, All-American. Face-off man, Blake Malamphy will face off out of Archbishop Spalding High School, Annapolis, Maryland for Salisbury. Salisbury visiting Unis. Tufts, the Jumbos, and the Home Whites. Underway national championship game from Philly. Malamphy the win, and right away, they've got their ace in Ferrara in the offensive end and the first possession of the Seagulls. Yeah, big face-off win. Sauls, the netminder for the tough Jumbos, Garzon. Good shot. Goals are out. Two and one for three. Bromwell semifinal win over Christopher Newport for Salisbury. Now yeah, the face off, the wing play, the scrum near the midfield line. 50-50 ball. Who wants it more? Who's going to get it on the ground? Still no clear possession. And finally, Salisbury comes away with a good track down by DeFazio. I don't mention All-American pole and wing player for Salisbury. Yeah, you see, DeFazio showing you with that left hand. Great ground ball pickup. Love the strategy of batting the ball to open areas. To an open area, got into the line of sight, an earshot of his teammate. Nice execution. Isaac Thrasher, the assist. Goal for Dowd. So two assisted tallies to begin the game. And again, similar scrum off the wing play. Battle. To the right of the Salisbury cage, no clean possession. As the physical play continues, and again it's Woodward. With a six-foot pole, comes up with a GB for Salisbury. Nicholas Ransom. Has had a great year for Salisbury as well. In the nets, again here today for the Seagulls. 85 goals cross for our up. Brown sensational as well. But so far, it's been Bromwell, Dowd, and Nestor scoring in the game for Salisbury. Trouble off the wing. Battle there along the sideline for Malamphy. And it does. Brown spins back to his left, puts a stick in his right hand, and whips it past the Tufts netminder. What a start here for Jim Berkman's team. They have not won a championship since 2017. Beat RIT that year at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough 15-7. But this is a program looking for championship number 13. A lucky 13. It's all going well right now. Wing. For Salisbury. Tufts they one. are crushing yeah. Tufts here at 5 zip. I, I think you need a timeout. If you're the Tufts Jumbos, you have been Bum rushed here in the early going by this potent Salisbury team. Tufts, they need to catch their breath. No shots on goal so far. And they need to get their offense going. They need to get some defensive stops. And, and now they just have to chip away at the Salisbury advantage. We'll see what Casey Denofalo, the head coach in year seven. He played lacrosse, football, and basketball at Tufts. He's the only known Jumbo to have scored a goal in the cross. Touchdown pass. In Salisbury is rolling heavy. Face-off win. Tufts much needed. But the shot. Trail check. Last second. The All-American Mason Cohn trying to win the face-off and score for Tufts. But he got shut down. Set a Medford, Massachusetts. Outside Boston. Six. Nothing. Second quarter underway. First possession here for the Jumbos. And much needed to get something going in the half field, but balls on the grass again. Toward the midfield line, or sort of the sideline, and that is going to be out of bounds. Good effort. Fender, who dragged him into the goal mouth. Not maliciously, not illegally, just guys getting tangled up together. That's why the goal stood, even though the Tufts player ended up in the goal mouth. Face off win for the All American Mason Cohn, senior out of San Diego, and Torrey Pines High. Step away by Brune. To find the far post. Hold call. Salisbury and Tufts again. Retrigger Ethan O'Neill off the wing. You know, the offensive end for the Jumbos. And just like that, after two goals to make things 6 2. Inside, away from the pressure, gets underneath. What a shot. He loves that inside roll. Face-off violation this time against Salisbury. So Tufts past the Tufts netminder. The crab cakes are starting to get hand-formed as we speak. Are they? That sounds so good. Second team all coastal across conference, CLC. Luke Nestor, a career season for him this year. He was just absolutely brilliant. Couple goals. Couple shots here today where he tucks the stick back, hides it. 
and then comes with a big overhand release. Beautiful shot. 20th appearance in the championship game. Jim Berkman told us this week the first time they were there in 1991. He has been a part of this program for decades. Incredible success trying for a 13th title here today. And with players like Salisbury. After Hammer. And Salisbury is just doing an incredible job because they won some individual matchups early in the game of drawing slides. And that is just white with time, space, and he tattoos the upper 90. What a shot. What a feed. Beautiful ball movement. Unselfish play for Salisbury. After a tag with Ferry and Brown had scored for Tufts to make it 6-2 and make things a little more respectable. Another run for Salisbury to widen the gap to eight. Things unsettled off the faceoff. Tufts a chance to get things going for Boyden. Nice split top. Drills the top shelf. Tufts, can they build on that goal with pizzazz? First multi-goal scorer of the game for the Jumbos. Face-off violation is going right back here to Salisbury. Jack Boyden's first point of the game. After Malanfi took the majority of the draws in the first quarter, Mac Moreland has gone, who has been terrific so far in this one for Tufts. Natural hat trick for Bruin, three in a row. Continues a huge season. There's the face-off. There's the horn. Salisbury, they sensed it. And they jumped all over ju the uh, Tufts. And like I said, they bum-rushed them. So 30 minutes of lacrosse left to be played. Let's see how this plays out. The first 15 minutes doesn't come back to haunt them. Sixth appearance national championship game for Tufts out of Medford, Massachusetts, near Boston. 20th time for Salisbury. There's a secret. Goals try for the Baker's Dozen. Lucky 13th national title. Face off midfield dot. Here we go, half number two. Then Tufts in initial possession. Try to create some kind of momentum. Down by six to begin the second half. Critical touch, I think, here, Dixie, just to get a couple good. Love the high bounce. It was going to take a special shot to beat Ransom. That was it. Tagliaferri Ferry had the first goal of the game for Tufts to begin the second quarter. Brun had three in a row. And now the pole goal scored by Frizzoli. So a chance for a second time, Dixie, in this game. Finish. Cross cage. Plants it in the top corner. All-American National Player of the Year. Two USILA D3 honors in the postseason for Boyden. Gold. When his squad needed a big tally, he comes through. Four and three for seven in the semis in D3 against Christopher Newport. Jim Berkman told us this week, no one wants it more. No one works harder than the best player in the nation. Offensively, Cross Ferrara got his first. You're right, Garzone read it well. Got a piece. Good hustle. 50-50 ball. Comes right back to Salisbury, at least for the moment. Can they find it near the midfield line and control and settle things in the half field? This is a great play by honorable mention All-American. Cuts it to 11-7. Tufts, face-off win. Now right back in the offensive end. Which can be trouble when you're facing some of the best players offensively in the nation. Including Brune, the second team All-American. Had a natural hat trick in the second quarter. But yet has the wrist strength to deliver it one-handed over the shoulder. Kurt Brun showing Braun with that shot. So Boyden, 68 goals entering play. We saw the numbers for Brun. He's 60 plus goals as well. Off the wing it. X. Tough scores it. Big one for Tufts. Mason Cohn, your first team All-American. Wins it out the front door. I don't know what that guy's story is, but he is fired up for the Tufts Jumbos. We talked about a first-team All-American playing like that. Wins it out the front door. 
cruises right down Patterson Avenue and sticks it past Ransom. Look out. Here comes Tufts. Mason Cohn, New Canaan, Connecticut. Huge tally under 90 seconds now. Fading third quarter clock. We've got a new game here. Six zip after one now. 11-9. Big face off off the wing. And effective play for Salisbury. Liquor have combined for video game like numbers. 219 combo points entering this game today. Hat trick for Brown. Only one for Cross Ferrara to get up to 86 goals to lead the nation. But he'll be very happy with his three goal lead. Still 29.2 to go, third quarter. A lot could happen. We've seen some unsettled lacrosse, pole goals today. Lots of action off the fast break. Brown's amazing. What a play. This is an area, New Orleans won that last faceoff, which was gigantic. That allowed Brown to go to work, draw the penalty. I like the use of the two-man faceoff rotation here for Salisbury. Moreland, head-to-head, Cohn, the All-American. Cohn, that ground ball. Traffic. Wow, what a play. Oh, Swimming, oh, oh, oh. elevating. Mason Cohn, that was spectacular. Oh, oh, oh. That and was like right back here for Tufts. That was like you last night at the, at the restaurant, <laughs> picking up the... What'd you have there? Mussels? You had clams? Oh, clams you had some seafood. Stuff. Lobster was amazing. Getting set. Fourth quarter here. Lincoln Financial Field. Division three men's lacrosse national championship on the line. Salisbury trying for its 13th title. Tufts in the championship game again. These teams have met already four times in the title tilt. Meeting number five. We'll see who rises to the occasion. Big face-off win for Tufts starting the fourth. Dave Ryan, Mark Dixon with you. Former midfielder Johns Hopkins. We already saw Lenore Ryan win its first ever D2 title today. Is it past Garzone? And all of a sudden, Salisbury's back up by four. Three and six shooting for Nestor in the game. Another hat trick here for the high scoring Seagulls. Bryce Bromwell had one. Brown has been the offensive man of the game so far for the Jumbos. Wildwell tucks it, sticks it. Gulls up by five. Four for eight shooting Bryce Bromwell. Face off win much needed for Mason Cohn and company. And Tufts back on offense, but the lead now at five. And a great start to the fourth quarter here for the Seagulls. High. Takes Ransom on the elevator to the top floor. Beautiful shot. Great adjustment by Tufts. A lot of times when teams shut a guy off, they extra man units can panic and they don't execute. Jumbos do that. Cone, face-off win. Shot. Boyden stopped. Looking for back-to-back -back jack. Save Nicholas Ransom. Meets the moment. Now the outlet here for Salisbury. Brune, no goals in the tournament. Dixie against Lee. Lynchburg and RIT, the two tie defending champs. Get out of here. Five today. Wow. To lead the jumbo attack. That is shocking. And I'm not being dramatic. That is, I mean, the way he has played today, the way he has put the ball in the back of the cage. And, you know, he's picked up the slack for Swank, who's been limited, well, shut out so far in this one today. So kudos to Broom. One loss between these two teams. Tufts 22 0 entering the D3 final. One didn't know was at 22 you can't have that casual approach first off and second when he's above the goal with his hands free like that it's trouble finds the far post nice little jump shot nice work cross Ferreira 28th overall pick PL draft by the Chrome Lacrosse Club this year a D3 pick for the PLL. Pretty impressive. Four-time first-team All-American. What a career for Salisbury. And from the All-American. 88 goals on the year. To lead Division Three. What a talent. All three goals in this game have come in the second half. Face-off win. Cone and company here. Brewing the back end. A lefty shot is blocked. Never got to the cage. Yep. Recall a couple from the All-American. 88 goals on the year to lead Division Three. What a talent. All three goals in this game have come in the second half. Face-off win. Cone and company here. 
Brew in the back in a lefty shot is blocked. Never forgot it's individual effort for Del Cristo. You can see with a muted celebration that Tufts can feel this might be an insurmountable deficit. We'll see. Cone, All-American faceoff man, does have another draw win at the dot at midfield. And basically, it's got to be make and take. It's got to be a goal on every position. He didn't track that one and make the save. 29th of the year for Jack Regnery entering play as the fifth leading scorer on this incredibly talented offensive Tufts team. Loaded at 20 plus goals a game. Good play off the wing. Taken right back. Bromwell, double team, and a timeout call. Jim we had all the way yeah. on the field to. Tufts going to get the ball back anyway. But he finds pay dirt. Name of the paper, date for the prom. Scores a goal. Cohen face off win in the late going here. I love your expressions. <laughs> Best part of my year. Yes. An injured Salisbury player out the face off. Last thing you want to see this late in the game. Blake Malfeet 